What's up everyone? Welcome back to another exciting Art of War video. We are here to talk about Chaos Demons. So of course, I had to bring the master of chaos himself, Nick Nanavati. We're here to talk about a Warhammer community article that just got put up by Games Workshop this morning, talking about 10th edition rules for Chaos Demons. I'm super excited. Everyone knows demons are the best faction in Warhammer. They're the reason to play Warhammer. They're, they're the coolest thing. They have Fate Weaver. What else is there to say? Do we see Fate Weaver? We'll find out. We're going to find out really soon. If you want to see even more content from us about 10th edition, make sure you like this video, leave a comment, and subscribe. That'll get you a notification every time we go live, which is going to be every time Games Workshop posts up an article talking about the brand new ways to play 40k. Which feels like every day at this point. You know, I'm just saying. I think it is. Mm -hmm. Alright, Nick. You ready to get into this one? I'm ready, John. Born ready look at that artwork 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 more artwork yep you know they always like to start off with the fluff uh they do mention uh, an army-wide deep strike okay army-wide deep get strike to do what interesting we do. so demons still get two things also every one of their units is going to support an invulnerable save which is sounds suspiciously like what everyone else has not quite the demonic save that they have today but maybe maybe that's just a, a poor little tech priest in the bosoms of games workshop not typing demonic or maybe there's no ways to ignore invulnerable saves, and they're like, eh, it's good enough. It, you know, there could be a lot of there things. There could be a lot of things. Or, right? or there are invulnerable save ignoring effects, and demons will just hate it, much like they did in previous editions. Good. No. <laughs> All right, so we're starting to get into the actual rules here. This has got to be the part you're excited about, right? I, I'm excited about the whole thing. Fate okay. Weaver included. I'm sure you'll, you'll find him eventually. Uh, so... Uh, they start off by telling us about the Shadow of Chaos rule, which looks like the army rule you get for being Chaos Demons. So this mm -hmm. is regardless of your detachment. If you are playing Chaos Demons, you get the Shadow of Chaos. Mm Hype -hmm. for this? You want me to read it out? Yeah, read it out. All right. So if your army is uh, Legion's Demonica, then certain areas of the battlefield are considered to be within your army's Shadow of Chaos. So yeah, like, they are. Some parts are claimed. So your deployment zone, always your Shadow of Chaos. At the start of any phase, any phase... If you control at least half of the objectives within No Man's Land, then until the end of that phase, No Man's Land is within your Armory Shadow of Chaos. So, if I control the objectives in No Man's Land, which usually there's like two to three, yeah. and if I control half, which shouldn't be too bad, especially if I just walk to the middle objective, assuming mm -hmm. that's still how it all works, then the whole realm is in my shadows. We like that. We like yeah. that. whole realm's in your shadows at that point. So... Uh, at the start of any phase, if you control at least half of the objective markers within your opponent's deployment zone, uh, then until the end of that phase, your opponent's deployment zone is within your army's shadow of chaos. That seems really hard. But if I can pull it off, that probably is Surely good. shadow of chaos in your opponent's deployment zone has got to be good. I mean, have you seen the powers of shadows? I, I'm sure I'm about to. You're, you're about to find out, John. So, now let's talk about the benefits of this, because, you know, it's not just the fancy words. Uh, so while a Legion's Demonica unit is within your army's Shadow of Chaos, each time, just, just within, it doesn't say holy, so unless there's some changes to within in the core book, it looks like if you just have one model in your deployment zone, you're within the army's Shadow of Chaos. So basically, if I hold two objectives in, out of the three in No Man's Land, the entire No Man's Land is Shadowfall, and then one Plague Bearer out of ten Plague Bearers toes his little foot into No Man's Land, and then they count as in Shadows? Uh, it looks like I. Dope. So, if you are uh, in your within your army Shadows of Chaos, each time that unit takes a Battle Shock test, add one to the test, and if it's passed, one model in that unit regains up to D3 Lost Wounds. But if it's Battle Line, you can instead heal D3 Destroyed models. That's pretty nice. I mean, it's not a super exciting, like, mono-faction rule. I hope there's more to it, but random healing with the Tide to Morale has always been, like, a thing demons do. Yeah. I'm, I'm so involved just, you know, anytime, anytime you're wounded, then you take a Battle Shock, we'll just pass it and mm -hmm. heal. And also, better Battle Shock is going to probably be important. It's also each time the unit takes a Battle Shock test. So we saw earlier Tyranids can just make you take Battle Shock tests. Make me heal my army. Thanks, Tyranids. You know, you'd think that the Shadow Lord would be better against demons. No. Apparently not. So, next up we've got Demonic Terror. While an enemy unit is within the Shadows of Chaos, if they take a Battle Shock test, subtract one from the test. I like that. And if they fail, they take D3 Mortal Wounds. Can you imagine Demons vs. Demons just being wild D3 Mortals, heal D3 Wounds back all over the place? Yeah, that is going to be a little spicy, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so uh, interesting rules for Chaos Demons here. A lot of mon morale shenanigans. And then uh, I think that uh, the Shadow of Chaos is going to come up again. I hope so. That, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, anyone who can, uh, yep, can get key objectives, turns, whole parts of the battlefield into dangerous no-go zones. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, and now they're talking about uh, the Demonic Incursion Detachment. So that's 
the one detachment every army is going to get. Yours is a demonic incursion detachment. Boop, 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 Would demonic. you like some warp rifts with that? Everyone likes deep striking, okay? Deep striking is by far the coolest tactic that, that exists in Warhammer, mm -hmm. and Fate Weaver can deep strike. So therefore, warp rifts is a great rule. There you go. You just oh, you want me to do this? Yeah, okay. On. Each time a Legion's Demonica unit from your army is set up on the battlefield using the Deep Strike ability, if it is set up wholly within your army's Shadow of Chaos, because Belagor's got a big shadow, it can be set up anywhere that is more than six inches horizontally and more from all enemy models instead of more than nine inches away. So basically, six inch Deep Strike instead of nine inch Deep Strike. Awesome. As long as you've got that shadow of chaos going. Yeah. So uh, deep striking, I, I assume, is still going to be at the end of the movement phase and the reinforcement step, if that's still a thing. Mm -hmm. So presumably I can use my movement phase to just wander over to objectives, and then I'm in sh creating shadows. Well, I'll point out that it says at the beginning of a phase. Oh, so I can't be create shadows in my own movement phase. It won't work yeah, until the shooting the phase. the start of any phase. <sighs> So it's going to be tough to actually make the no man's land a little shadowy mm -hmm. for this rule. Yeah. It's going to be tricky. It's going to be tricky. It's going to be tricky. Uh, but sounds like big rewards if you pull it off. Yeah. Hopefully. Now, six inch deep strikes is great. Six inch deep strikes is great. Uh, now they've got uh, they've got even more even more rules because of course they do. There's a lot of rules in 40k. A lot of rules in 40k. Uh, so it's, uh, it's common for demons to be uh, conjured up by mortal followers. Uh, the demonic pack ritual allows a certain number of demons to join chaos armies. Okay, so this looks like a rule uh, for allies. And then they won't bring the shadow of chaos with them if you're not all chaos demons. Okay. Uh, so if you oh, strike wow. force, assuming they're keeping it the same as last time, strike force is the 2,000 point. Mm -hmm. um, so none of these models can be your warlord and can't have enhancements. Uh, but it looks like if you bring any chaos army, you can include up to in strike force 500 points of uh of demons and it looks like there's limits for if you have like if your warlord is lucius you can only include a slanesh if your army's death guard if your army's thousands if your army's world leaders you can only bring the gods that makes sense but interestingly here it just says chaos which means chaos knights can bring uh yeah might I be mean, able to bring some demons don't discriminate they belong in all of the armies they do belong in chaos knights and i'm very sad that it doesn't work right now so adding that sounds fun yeah i'm sure you get 500 points of demons allied into any chaos army it's, mm -hmm. it's not really like the patrol system since that's all kiboshed with anyway so you just kind of slot it in like it's units in your codex which is awesome there's no limitations here you just have more data sheets to play with pretty good so now they're going to start giving us some data sheets oh i'm excited starting with my favorite mm -hmm. keep your secrets all of slash so, uh, we've got the Keeper of Secrets. Toughness, 10. 18 wounds. Is, uh, a 5-up save, but, you know, sure, that's not going to matter much. Uh, leadership, 6-up, 14-inch move. Objective control, 5. Looks pretty good. 18 wounds uh, is, I think, a very small downgrade from where they are now. But uh, Toughness, 10 feels pretty nice. Mm -hmm. They're no longer the same toughness as a Rhino. They're now a little bit tougher than a Rhino, uh, which yeah. is good. And uh, they've got a lot of weapons here. Yeah, the thing with the Keepers is they're always, like, fragile, fast, and not flying. I'm wondering if they're still going to maintain that, that shtick or if they're going to change it up over here. Yeah, so it, it looks like they've uh, they've got a, a good amount of uh, ranged weapons here. So the Living Whip is uh, 6 shots, uh, strength 6, AP 1, damage 2, hits on 2s, that's nice. And it's also Assault, which uh, I think they said you can advance and shoot Assault weapons, well, kind of similar assume. to what... Well, they, they said it in the weapons article. Mm -hmm. uh, then we've got uh, another ranged weapon, Phantasmagoria, Witchfire. So Ooh. this is a psychic weapon. Looks like you're going to need either be six or nine shots. Ballistic skill two, strength six, AP two, damage one. And if you go for the nine shot version, you're going to get Hazardous. Gotcha. Which presumably means there's some way to damage yourself. So it's it's not dissimilar to how it is now. Obviously now it does some version of Mortal Wounds, mm -hmm. but it's a decent gun. I yeah, think. and then what with Devastating Wounds, uh, uh, that's where a, a six to wound, a critical wound, mm -hmm. gives you uh, some Mortal Wound output as well. So a little splash Mortal Wounds in Phantasmagoria, but like nine shots hitting on, on twos in addition to maybe six shots hitting on twos. That's like actually a decent amount of like anti personnel. Yeah, it's fifteen shots coming out of a keeper. It's all strength six, AP one slash two. It hits on twos. This is not bad. Like, yeah. oh, you have a chaff screen gone. Yeah, like that, that's that's uh, quite real. Mm -hmm. Now uh, we go into the melee weapons, and a lot of these have extra attacks, which uh, they haven't really covered how melee weapons work yet. No, but I, I would assume the extra attacks rule is like a keyword that is kind of how malefic attacks work today. And I'm yeah. just saying that because that's a ritual knife kind of strikes me as that. Yeah, attacks. and then like snap and claws are also extra attacks. So it, it's kind of weird because like they, they showed us, uh, for example, like how some 
characters have two weapons and they're like, oh, well, if, you know, if Abaddon gets to attack with both of his weapons, he makes like 39 attacks every time he fights. But none of those had extra attacks. And now the right. Keeper has multiple weapons and they do have extra attacks. To me, that, that means that you're using all of these. That's, yeah. That's the implication. I'm here. glad you brought it back to Abaddon there because I think the way I'm reading this is like mm -hmm. Abaddon would have to choose which weapon he's going to swing with, whereas a Keeper does not. It just has extra attacks. Yeah, that... That's that's my read on this. Uh, just, you know, we're kind of filling in the lines a little bit there, but what else could extra attacks mean? Right? <laughs> I mean, I think we're reading too hard here. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, three attacks, weapon skill two, strength six, AP two, damage two. Nice. Uh, four attacks, weapon skill two, strength six, AP two, damage three. Getting better. Devastating wounds means that that six to wound is going to be some mortals. Mm -hmm. And it's going to take the entire damage characteristic to mm -hmm. mortals, right? So, yep. not just one. No, that'd be, in this case, that'd be three. <laughs> yeah. And then a Witch Stealer Sword. Six attacks, weapon skill two, strength eight, AP two, damage three. Now, all of this is AP two. It's also not that strong. It's not that strong. Right. Toughness of a Rhino is nine, right? Yep. So, like, you're just wounding Rhinos on fives with your Keeper, assuming mm -hmm. strength and toughness is the same. Yep. And uh, that, to me, means the Keeper's going to be a really good bully. It's going after people weaker than it. But here's here's what's fun. Mm -hmm. All this AP two, we're thinking, like, AP two. AP is pretty good, right? Yeah. Let's go to the special rules. So, uh, yeah, it's got Deadly Demise D6, it's got Deep Strike, it's Shadows of Chaos. Now we've got an Aura. While a friendly Slanesh Legion's Demonica unit, oh, look at that, a uh, Slanesh Legion's Demonica, is within six inches, improve the AP of melee weapons in the unit by one. So Ooh. all of that's AP3 okay. now, and AP3 I like a lot. We've talked a lot about how the AP across the entire game seems to just be going down by one. Yeah, battle oh. Cannon's AP1. Yeah, it's oh, Battle Cannon. Right, right. Like, things are just not as powerful as they were today, mm -hmm. and things are getting tougher. So it's like the spectrum of durability increases both because offense is going down and defense is going up. Mm -hmm. So getting this ability is, like, enormous. This is, like... Yeah. Maybe the reason to play a keeper. because That's I'm, very exciting to me. Yeah, I'm unimpressed with its stat line, to be blunt, but I am very impressed with yeah. that rule. There's some more rules coming up here. So each time an attack targets this model, not range, not combat, an attack, subtract one from the hit roll. That's a nice roll. That's great. And then the Shining Aegis, the bear has a the Feel No Pain 5 plus ability. Okay, now that's, we're talking. That's, that's why I like this. 18 wounds with the 5 Feel No Pain. At first I was like, yeah. 5 up save with 18 wounds. This is gonna just die like what is it gonna do five of feeling pain on 18 wounds this thing is like as tough as mortarian though yeah. and it has a four up invulnerable save Woo! So, spicy so four up invuln minus one to hit five up feeling on pain now this doesn't show us the other side of the data sheet but we can look at the current keeper stat line because ninth edition the keeper chooses between a living whip or a ritual knife or a shining aegis you don't get all three right so we can probably assume that they didn't grow two extra arms in 10th edition that's that gene circle. I would not assume that demons did not just grow extra arms. I'm gonna especially Slanesh demons. I'm going to do it. I'm going to say that you're probably going to have to choose between the Living Whip and the Ritual Knife and the Shining Aegis. But I'm thinking if I take a Shining Aegis, minus one to hit Farp and Vuln 5 of Feel No Pain, 18 wounds, here's another little tidbit for you. Look at that key, look at that, the, those keywords. You know, you don't see they're towering. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. uh, there was some talk in the Terrain article about how terrain would affect X units except for towering. And... We're assuming towering is like the new 18 wounds. Right. So we haven't seen all the terrain rules yet, so we don't know what that means. But bare minimum, this thing doesn't have the terrain ignores you. Yeah. And so when we see what else comes in with the terrain rules, that may be very important. One of the design philosophies I heard them mention is that they don't like that you kind of want your characters to be below a wound threshold, yeah. where lower wounds is better. So they might have replaced the 18 wounds or 17 wounds dynamic that currently exists with just the word towering. Exactly. But if that's the case, it's just not here, which it's is great. Not there, but it's yeah. 18 wounds. It's 18, and 18 <laughs> wounds looks bad, but I'm like, wait a minute. It's no not. downside. 18 <laughs> wounds. That's great. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm really excited about the Keeper data sheet. I think this is great. Me too. Me too. Uh, weird that they explode now. That's that's new, right? Keepers don't explode right now? Yeah, demons just disappear into the warp. I'm okay. kind of bummed that they explode. Not that I don't think an 18 wound monster shouldn't explode. That's fine. But I, demons should just phase into the warp to me. There's no warp energy exploding out of them. Fair enough. So that's the Keeper. We don't know points yet, but there's a, a couple of rules on here that make me excited. It's all going to come down to points, of course. It's all going to come down to points. Then they give us Bellacor. You get two data sheets today, Nick. The big, You've been a good boy. The big Learned daddy this. Bellacor. Let's big go. daddy Bellacor. Only moves 12. Toughness 10, same as Keeper. A 4-up save, so okay. 18 wounds, so same as Keeper still. 
Uh, leadership six up, projective control five. Just like a slightly slower keeper, but you know he's got the, the flag. I'm keyword. pretty shocked. Bellicor and keeper are only leadership six up. I figured they'd be like five up. You know, these are like the biggest of demons. Necrons are six up. Necrons are six up. I think so. They, they're no, leadership's like, tough. I think Necrons. Do you know are six yesterday up. I failed to light flagonies twice the CPU roll? That's the same as failing leadership six twice. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe maybe there's going to be some ways to mitigate his leadership on the stage sheet. Perhaps. So uh, we've got Betraying Shades, Witch Fire, nine attacks, ballistic steel two, strength five, two damage one. Again, good anti personnel, but it's also devastating wounds. Mm -hmm. Ignores cover. That's great. So that's that's a that's a good that's gun. A good rule. Uh, but not assault. Uh, betraying Shades. Uh, so this is the focused version. So oh, okay, so we've got options here. So it becomes twelve attacks, ballistic steel two, strength six, AP three, damage one. Hazardous. So you can choose to, because it looks like everything else is the same. So if you choose to take the hazardous rule, you get plus three shots, plus one strength, plus one AP. Mm -hmm. I don't remember if they've covered hazardous, but it was on plasma guns. So I'm assuming it's like a, if you roll ones to hit. Yeah, we, we've I don't pretty much extrapolated that. It yeah. is the equivalent of overheat today. Yeah, so yeah. it's probably that. Uh, melee weapons. Uh, notably, they don't have extra attacks, so I'm really thinking you're choosing one of these. Oh, wait, no, this is literally a select one of these. Okay, cool. Uh, six attacks, strength 14, AP 4, D6 plus 1. Pretty good. Pretty good. 14 attacks, hits on 2, strength 8, AP 3, damage 1. So, I actually kind of hate his offensive profile. Because it reminds me of his offensive profile today, which yeah. is damage 1. And damage D6 plus 1 is just not, not exciting to me. But, strength 14 is great. AP 4 is money. And the, the sweet profile is still mm -hmm. 14 attacks and strength 8, AP 3. You know, that, that'll slaughter. It's pretty good. So, they've definitely set... Bellicor up to be kind of like um, kind of like uh, like the Abaddon of Chaos Demons. So uh, at the start of the battle round, select one of the following shadow form abilities until the end of the battle round. So he's gonna get one of these three things, and he also the area of battlefield within six inches of this model is considered to be within your army shadow of chaos. So that's very similar to how Warp Locus works right now. And of mm -hmm. course, Bellicor is a Warp Locus that allows you to move him around the table, and then you can deep strike units within six inches of him and be six inches away from the enemy. Considering that he himself is a tower, not tower, but he is a shower, shadow model, um, the, he's functionally a warp locust today, which is yeah. kind of cool. He also has the special rule stealth. Stealth. Yeah. Not lovely. Stealth. We still don't know what that does, but we I will find out one day. We will find out soon. Presumably, it makes him stealthy. I, I would guess it's plus one save or minus one to hit, or yeah. maybe both. It's but, either, like, yeah. either going to be like light cover or dense cover or something like that. I don't right. know. Um, all right. Now let's talk about the Shadow Farm abilities, because this is where we're getting spicy. Oh, he's got a 4-up interval. Yeah, you know, he good does. for him. <laughs> uh, so while a friendly Legion Demonic unit is within 6 inches of this model, it can only be targeted by ranged attacks if the attacking model is within 18. Not not wholly within, just within. And it's an aura. That's an aura. Okay. So, so if you maybe battle around 1, maybe you're just going to be like, yeah, I, um, I'm going to just deploy every 1 near Balakor. I'm going to deploy on the line. and But, but gonna, near Bellicor. But near Bellicor. But near Bellicor. <laughs> Not even that close. Oh, it's within six. Within six. Within six. Pretty close. But I'm going to deploy on the line with Bellicor, and to shoot me, you have to come into my charge range. Awesome. That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, so this is Paul of Despair is an aura that's... All of these are aura psychic, and we're not really sure what that means, but we'll find out. Right. In the battle shock step of your opponent's command phase. Okay. If an enemy unit is below starting, below starting strength is within six of this model... That unit must take a battle shock test for the purpose of the ability. Has a starting strength of one. Considered to be below starting strength. Well, has lost one or more wounds. Okay, so they've said that battle shock you take if you're below half strength. So if you choose this option to six inch aura below starting strength instead of half strength. So it's just an aura that makes you count as below half? Yeah. If the, an enemy unit that is below its starting strength is in six, this model, that unit must take a battle shock test. So this is interesting. It doesn't say instead of the normal one. So I'm pretty sure if you have a below half strength unit within six of Bellicor and you choose Paul of Despair, it's take a battle shock test for being below half strength, take a battle shock test for being below uh, starting strength. I'm just going to read this slow because it's a little yeah. confusing. In the battle shock step of your opponent's command phase, if an enemy unit is in, is that is below its starting strength is within six inches of this model, that unit must take a battle shock test. For the purposes of this ability, if a unit has a starting strength of one, it is considered to be below its starting half of its wounds. So this is like, I, I agree. Well, I think it's, it's, well, it's lost one or more wounds, not half. Gotcha. So single models will suffer as if they're below half as long as they're taking a point of damage. Mm -hmm. Units will suffer, will count as below half, just generically. But it doesn't say they count as below half, it just says they take a battle shock test. Mm. And you already have to take a battle shock test if you're... 
if you're below half. If you're below half. So this, we're going to have to like read the actual battle shock right. rules, not just what they tell us in an article. That might make you take two. That would be That cool. would, because I was reading this, I was like, ah, that, is that ever going to be as good as the other options? But if you can make someone just double battle shock, that's... Especially with the mortal wounds. Especially with the mortal wounds, yeah. with the negatives, because I remember if you're within six inches of Bellacore, you're also in the shadow of chaos. Mm -hmm. So like that... That might be something. Take two battles with text. Take them at negative leadership. Negative, I'm yeah. assuming demons have other ways, which will probably stack to reduce morale and battle shocks as well. It seems like a theme of theirs. And now we're just doing mortal wounds for standing near them. That's pretty good. Uh, the final one here is while well, friendly, the demonic unit is within six inches of this model. You can re-roll battle shock and leadership tests for that unit. So it's like the flip side. Yeah. So it seems like early game, maybe when people aren't within 18 inches of you, you may the wreathed in shadows might be good. I think we're going to start off probably with Wreath and Shadows. That seems like where you're starting. <laughs> and then maybe as the game progresses, we go to Paul of Despair and just make people run. But of course, it's going to depend on how Battleshock like, technically works. Yeah, like and how like how in practice, how how many armies are just like, I auto-pass Battleshock for being a Custodes or something like that. Yeah. Um. So, interesting. I wonder if Bellacor... I, I don't think he's going to come with his own detachment rules and all that, at least not in the short term. So. I'd be, in the indexes, I'd be surprised. Yeah, this seems is like a codex This role. is what he's going to be bringing to the table. Mm -hmm. Very limited compared to what he brings today but like if these rules are quite powerful yeah, it's um, hard to gauge I context that I could mean, be huge wreathed in shadows looks huge a wreathed in shadows is a great rule like it, that yeah that alone i know we don't know how many points this guy's gonna be but like that alone is an argument right there um, yeah that's a wow that's a super wow. damn defining situation yeah. long grains guns you got a rail gun come close <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah bring, bring your hammerhead with an 18 of bellacor yeah no problem no problems okay all right uh so that's bellacor so we got uh, some weapons too uh, he, interestingly enough, he doesn't have all the god keywords anymore. Oh, that's true. That's true. He doesn't. I'm kind of I'm kind of okay with that. Um, yep. So here's Belcor. They give us some weapons. Uh, oh, the extra. God, we literally speculated on this. The extra attacks weapon ability allows these to make extra attacks. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. They they wrote it the same way we said it, John. We should yeah. write these rules. We should we should write these rules. Bioblade. So the, Bioblade. Uh, extra attacks lethal hits. Did you know extra attacks means you can make extra attacks? <laughs> By God. Uh, so three attacks, weapon skill uh, two, strength six, AP two, damage two. That's solid. Uh, and then it literally <laughs> now tells us the number. So Chimber can make attacks with that weapon in addition to the one it chooses to fight with. So the one it chooses to fight with. So you death. choose your singular weapon. But then if you have extra attacks, you're like, yeah, also this one. Extra attacks. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right. Do we have more extra attacks? I want more. I do want more. Ooh, cavalry to carnifexes. Oh, I want to see carnifexes. John, get carnifexes out of no! here. This is Demon Day. Oh, Don, on. I'll kick you out of here. This All is right. about slaughtering carnage. This is about this is about Scarbrand. This is about Scarbrand. So Scary B uh, has slaughter and carnage. So it looks like he has a weapon that he chooses which attack he makes with. All right, eight attacks. Weapon skill two, strength sixteen, AP four, damage six. Okay, that's a profile. Scarbrand, you don't disappoint. You're here to smack my man. Uh, then the sweep. Uh, 16 attacks, <laughs> uh, weapon skill 2, strength 8, AP 1, damage 2. I would say, damn, AP 1 is disappointing, but I'm not disappointed with Scarbrand. Look at He's this. He's slaughtering you and carnaging you, striking uh, you and sweeping you. Well, uh, like, it, it's going to be kind of hilarious if at the end of this we find out, like, corn grater demons are also a, a plus 1 AP or a... Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, never mind. This he, is also terrible. Now, unfortunately, Slaughter and Carnage don't have the rule extra attacks, which we know now means extra attacks. I'm so, glad they confirmed that. For they us. really did. Yeah. So we'll have to choose between striking or sweeping. But man, they both smack. Yeah. They so, do. Both you could do smack. 48 damage with strike, or you could do 32 damage with sweep. I think the, the choice is clear. Strike. 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 Just strike. Em. Slaughter and Carnage. <laughs> All right. Uh, they do give us some stratagems as well. So, uh, kind of wrapping this up here, uh, corrupt real space, one CP, uh, start of any command phase, one Legion's demonic unit from your army that is within a range of objective control, that objective marker is said to be corrupted and remain under your control, even if you have no models within range of it, until your opponent controls it at the, uh, start or end of any turn. So in addition, while an objective marker is corrupted and under your control, that area of the battlefield within six inches of that objective marker is considered within your army shadow of chaos. That's, so it's one CP sticky and objective, but then if you do it, that objective, while it's sticky, is a six-inch aura of Shadow of Chaos. That's an amazing rule. Yeah, I, the first half of this, I was like, okay, this is interesting, this is good, we saw a rule like this on Cadence. Second half of that, I'm like, oh. Uh, yeah, I mean, one CP sticky and objective, forget the shadows, is already niche powerful. Like, there yeah. are definitely times where you just want to sticky and objective and forget about it, uh, and hmm. use your unit for other purposes mm -hmm. on the battlefield. 
But now it's also a Shadow of Chaos, so it has more synergies with all those leadership shenanigans, the Battle Shock, Bellacore, Deep Striking. It seems like demons are very stylistically how they're going to play today with yeah. weird Deep Strike leadership shenanigans, and uh, that is right up my alley. So that's that's very really interesting because I was thinking about when I saw this. I was thinking of like a classic five objective mission, like what we have now, because we don't really know what they're like in tenth yet. Right. Where it's like, all right, there's three in the middle, and if the demon player controls two of them at the start of their command phase, the whole mid zone is Shadow of Chaos. And I'm just thinking, all right, you'd make sure that you know it's like it's like playing against like the current like hold two hold more. It's like I need to make sure that they don't hold more. I can't give them the twelve. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go push out, stop them from getting holding two of the middle ones, and then they only get Shadow of Chaos in their deployment zone, and I just stay six inches away from that. We're fine. But if I leave you one objective, you're just going to make that the Shadow of Chaos. Yeah, they really are. That's that's annoying. No, yeah, I don't like I'm that. gonna make that nice and shadowful. Very, very shadowful. Okay. Um, the one thing I don't love though is that you have to t do it at the start of the command phase. You scroll up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So start of a command phase, like you're not necessarily within range of objective marker at that point, or control. Yeah, you have to survive on it. Yeah. You, so. Mid game, you'll definitely pull this off. Early game, you can use it on your home field, but this is gonna be tougher yeah, to I use. I think your com your home field's already shot of chaos. That doesn't seem too big a deal. Right, right. Oh, sticky's nice. Sticky's useful. Stick I mean, sticky on its own is worth yeah. this draft. We'll have to see if uh, there's any like scout moves or forward deploying demons. Nerglings. If nerglings can still forward deploy, then boom, sticky. Nerglings. Nerglings. Okay. Uh, really, really good stuff here. So corrupt real space. Um, yep. Just talking about it, and then just art. The studio. Art. Art. There's always more art. You gotta see it. Um, let me see if there's any rules in here. There's always some rules hidden in the depths. Oh, I hate when they do that. Predominantly melee focused. Yep. Uh, every unit being able to deep strike. Mm, doesn't look like Doesn't it. look like there's any rules in here. But there's more black library things. Oh, yeah. There's a Demon book, world? A book for Nick to read. I love it when they do that. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then there's some faction focuses. And they don't tell us... Which faction is next? But we know that next up today is Chaos Demons. Next up today is Chaos Demons. That's all we need. That's all we need. All right. Well, I think that's going to wrap us up here. Yeah. So thank you so much to everyone who, uh, who tuned into this. If you want to catch even more of our content, make sure you like this video. Leave a comment. Tell Nick how happy or sad you are about Fate Weaver in 10th edition. Uh, obviously happy. Like, look how happy Nick is. Let me know how excited you are about these extra attacks. Uh, now that we have that rule, it's like the missing yeah. key that we were all looking I, forward to. Honestly, I mission. feel like I could play the game right now. We can. Yeah, with okay. the extra attacks. We can make extra attacks, John. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching this. Make sure that you subscribe to this channel if you want to get notified every time we go live. We have so much 10th edition content coming your way. We are all very, very excited. So please, thank you for supporting uh, the channel. And if you want to get even more awesome art of war content there's always more you should check out the link in the description below this video the warroom.vhx.tv is the link you need that's going to take it take you right to the war room that's where uh the art of war coaches teach you how to get better at the game you love it'll also give you access to our wonderful discord community yeah and if you uh sign up through that link you can actually get a free three-day trial so if we're we're coming up close to 10th edition, you've been thinking about the worm, you want to see what it's all about, now is the best time to do it. Get a free three-day trial in the description below, and you can see for yourself what makes the Warhammer community so special. Thank you for watching, everyone. We'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.